Welcome to the summit. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thank you for stopping by. Today, our guest is the commissioner of the Great Plains Athletic Conference, Corey Westra. And commissioner, first off, thank you for being with me today. I want to talk about uh, the news that is coming from the GPAC this week. And the release came out saying that you all are moving forward with fall sports for 2020. Can you talk about that for a moment? Yeah, uh, certainly been an interesting time. Um, probably heard that uh, phrase a few times over the last uh, months here, but since March 12, it's kind of one of those dates that will will go down as, as far as sports people know, they're always going to remember March 12, the day that sports uh, stopped around the country. Uh, but yes, uh, yesterday uh, we convened our Council of Presidents uh, in the morning. We do early morning meetings with them so we can get them all. And uh, we've been meeting periodically um, throughout the summer. And uh, yesterday we just did a, a check-in and we, we really got to uh, review where, we, where, where we've been and uh, where we might be going. And one of the uh, outcomes of that meeting yesterday was our president's strong desire uh, to indicate that we want to move forward this fall. Uh, numerous campuses uh, in our league, we have 12 member schools, um, have all come out individually uh, with intentions to have on-campus learning. Of course, everybody went online learning to end the spring semester. So uh, this just falls in line with that. Now, we know that, uh, you know, it, we're not uh, out of the woods when it comes to COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Uh, we know that there are still uh, numerous cases going around, but we also feel like we're in a spot in the country here with our four states. We cover North and South Dakota, Iowa, and Nebraska. You know, we feel like we're in a spot where uh, we want to give it a shot. And uh, we want to we want to work hard to mitigate as much as we can through screening. And obviously, there's going to be testing protocols in place as well. But uh, we feel like here in the Midwest uh, with our GPAC schools uh, that we, we can play this fall. So uh, we stated our intentions and we have received very positive feedback on that, Joey. Uh, it's been unbelievable. The outreach, um, the tweet alone uh, has been uh, uh, just retweeted and liked numerous times and just some of the comments were outstanding great news best news i've heard in a while uh and i really um appreciate that support but i also really appreciate the positivity uh that people want to move forward and uh and have fall sports here in 2020 so at this moment in time uh, we we plan to move forward well i concur with that then and i i want to go ahead and and uh, i'll retweet and favorite and that'd like be great and, and, uh, and go that route uh, commissioner you talk about in the release that there is a, a GPAC return to play task force. I know that's another phrase that's been used a lot in the last few months is task force. And, and you have individuals from the member institutions there in, in the conference that are a part of this. Talk about what goes into this then. And, uh, you know, who are some of the individuals in that? Yeah. So when you have a league of 12 members, uh, it's really hard to do group work. With, with everybody uh, involved. Uh, you, you value everybody's opinion, but uh, the law of numbers works against you. So we put a task force together of our leaders um, in our conference. So we have two athletic directors um, on that group. Uh, and then we also have an associate athletic director who has a athletic training background, which is really important. And then we have um, a faculty athletic representative to represent that part of our, our conference. And then we have uh, one president, and then my assistant commissioner, Lucas Mormon. So we're all on that task force together. Um, I would say, generally speaking, we meet every week, uh, maybe 10 days at times. We're going to certainly meet every week now. Uh, we meet again um, this week on Thursday afternoon. But um, our job is to really uh, try to take the the conference as a whole and and put it down into a manageable framework for return to play. And, and items that we've been discussing uh, really are your A to Z of what uh, game day looks like uh, within the GPAC. So starting from when a, a team may leave their campus in their bus or van to when they get to a venue, what does that look like? Um, how do we enter venues? How do we then prepare for a game and the warm up side of it, ultimately compete? And then how do we go home? Um, so those are, those are items that our task force is tackling. Uh, we are only us in terms of what we can do. We have the NAIA umbrella over us um, out of Kansas City. And, you know, they have given some pretty high level guidance in terms of the screening protocols and the testing protocols. So in some ways we uh, fill in the blanks, ap uh, we're applicable in our conference. So 
uh, you know, the, the screening and testing piece, uh, the rubric and all those things that are out there, you know, that's been laid out nationally that all the conferences are going to follow. But uh, specifically to our members, what does it look like to be in the GPAC and compete? And our, our overarching goal, number one, is our student athletes health and well-being. I mean, that goes without saying. But number two is we don't want a venue in the conference to look like where, where did that come from or why would that be that way? We want everything to look fairly similar. So when you go to whatever venue it may be, you have this sense of unity and cohesion that our conference brings. And that's one of the beauty, be beautiful things about our league is that we do have that, uh, we do have that camaraderie and that, uh, that, that sense of uh, working together and cooperation. We're speaking today with Corey Wester, the commissioner of the GPAC, the Great Plains Athletic Conference. Uh, commissioner, I know that there are a number of other conferences not only in the NAI, but also in the NCAA that have taken a little bit of a different direction uh, with the decision and some of the releases that have been coming out then in the last two or three weeks. Uh, how difficult was it for you or was it difficult to, to go the direction that you're going? Well, it is difficult in the fact that, you know, we value our conferences and our partners around the country. So when you do have conferences that announce they're not competing, your heart goes out to them because you know that they really struggled to come to that decision. A lot of the ones that we've seen so far, I think, are, are geographically challenged in terms of what they're doing, in terms of the hot spots that they're in. Um, you know, some of some of those conferences had individual institutions uh, say that they weren't going to compete this fall. And at some point, when you lose critical mass of member institutions, you lose a conference. So uh, certainly uh, in the South, that was the case uh, uh, with Texas and some of those schools. So the Red River made that announcement earlier. Um, uh, well, late last week, actually, with the Red River. And then also later last week, the Cascade, which is the Pacific Northwest, which when this whole thing started, you know, uh, uh, Seattle and and those areas were under the microscope. And Unfortunately, they've come back around uh, and are again. So, uh, you know, my colleagues, Tony Stigliano down in the Red River and uh, Rob Cashel up in the Cascade, you know, they're working their tails off. But and my heart goes out to them. And, um, you know, we do deeply care about each other. So you hear that type of thing. And, uh, and, and you know, you, you do have to kind of pause and reflect on your conference. But, you know, we also have to kind of take it back into our region. Uh, we've been meeting as a smaller group of commissioners uh, within the NAIA, uh, specifically around the GPAC. Uh, that would be the North Star um, Athletic Association. Uh, they have an interim commissioner right now who's doing a great job. Uh, and then we also have the KCAC, the Heart of America, the American Midwest Conference. Uh, us uh, commissioners have been meeting pretty regularly here in the Midwest corridor. Just this week, we kind of expanded that a little bit. We added the Sooner Conference to the discussion and we pulled in the Association of Independent Institutions into the discussion because there's some of them sprinkled in with us. We just had a good discussion. And, you know, by and large, the intent among the, the Midwest region schools was to proceed much like us. Now, they may have not come out publicly with a statement in that regard, but uh, that gave some uh, that gave some clarity to me to report to our presidents of where the Midwest may be. But uh, this is ongoing. I mean, everybody knows that uh, you don't have to turn away from the, the news cycle very far to know that every day and every hour brings something different. But uh, again, focusing back in on who we are here in the GPAC, uh, we felt confident on our statement yesterday to move forward. Commissioner, I know that uh, from your perspective, it's it's probably pretty easy to get to promote your conference. I mean, the, the, the league is doing well. 31 national championships in the last 20 years. Some of them recent too. I mean, you talk about the Midland and dance and and then Concordia's women's basketball team, national champions in 2019, and look to be, you know, possibly on the way to a repeat. Sure. I know the basketball tournament was shut down, and of course we go back to March 12th. And yes, that's a date that I will always remember <laughs> as a sports broadcaster and just a fan. Uh, but 32 and two on the season, uh, you have to give a lot of props to Concordia. And then of course Morningside football. My goodness. Back-to-back uh, -back national champions. They did get the chance to repeat and and did so solidly. 29 consecutive wins and counting uh, moving into this year. So I, it, it seems like there's a lot for you to be excited about getting to lead that league. Well, it is. Uh, it, it's a tremendously exciting to lead this league. Uh, I've been in this position since 2003 and uh, been a part of the growth of the league and uh, you know been through some of the bumps of the league, but also the the, the mountaintop experiences uh, when you talk about national championships. And, you know, it, it's a league that's so committed to um, 
a common goal of our student athletes. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all faith-based institutions and uh, we, we uh, push forward with that common goal as well. And we really value the student part of student athlete. Uh, we were among the leaders in the country when it comes to uh, scholar athletes every year and scholar teams as well. Just this week, I saw the Hastings volleyball team had the top GPA uh, in the country among all, all American Volleyball Coaches Association volleyball teams, which was outstanding. And then Grace Berry from Concordia was the headliner of the COSIDA academic team for basketball. So just a little snapshots of people doing awesome things. And we've had numerous national players of the year um, as well. And, you know, sometimes people ask, well, what makes the GPAC kind of go? What, what makes you tick a little bit? And I think it's, uh, number one, it's great schools. Uh, it's great schools that uh, have great uh, support staffs, great boards, uh, great presidents, great athletic directors. And then it filters down to some outstanding coaches who recruit well, and then kids who want to stay around and, and play at this level and, and really uh, be a part of this GPAC experience. And, um, you know, when we talked about this fall and, and the prospect that by and large, most of our games are going to be with ourselves, especially football, it's all going to be GPAC football. You know, it's pretty easy to look in the mirror and go, that's going to be a competitive season. And uh, the kids are going to have a great experience doing that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great uh, run, and we just wrapped up 20 years in a really odd way, not having spring sports, uh, but 20 years of the conference dating back to 2000, and uh, we look forward to another 20 years uh, here in the GPAC. Well, one of the things, too, that you all have the, the privilege to do is, is get to host, at least on, on a national level, when it comes to volleyball. Uh, you all have, have hosted that uh, national tournament for a few years and an extension now going into at least 2024, I believe. I mean, that has to be nice, too, and, and get some recognition for the conference and really getting to to maybe show out a little bit then when, when you bring people to town. Yeah, uh, we've had the National Volleyball Championship for the NAI here in Sioux City. That's where I'm based uh, since 19 uh, or pardon me, since 2008. Um, so we've had a nice run there and we did get a contract extension. Uh, we've seen some changes in formats and those types of things, but the, the championship experience has remained constant. Um, the Tyson Event Center is a phenomenal venue here in downtown Sioux City. Uh, it was built in the early 2000s, 2003, four was right when that came online. And just in this last year, we, we added some new scoreboards and uh, ribbon boards and some kind of glitz and glamour around the arena. And that was a really neat uh, addition to the atmosphere. That's pretty awesome already for volleyball. So uh, we love doing that every December. And then, of course, basketball in March has been here now over 20 years. Uh, we started that one in 1998, and uh, we did set the record this year, even though the games were cut short. We we did play our 683rd game here in Sioux City uh, with that first game of the tournament, and that means that more we are now the most women's basketball national championship games have been played in our city, and we're really proud of that. And, uh, of course, we got uh, 10 games uh, in this year, so would have loved to build that out a little bit more, uh, but March 12 came and went. So, uh, But, uh, yeah, it's been a tremendous relationship with the NAIA, and I think that really does work in concert with the GPAC that we are right here and you know, kind of the quasi-host here as a conference and uh, really get to show off what we do here in the, in the Midwest. Well, I know that uh, we wish you success then with the fall sports season and hope that everything does get to go well for you all in, in all the fall sports as, and as we head in, even into the winter sports as well. Commissioner Corey Wester from the Great Plains Athletic Conference, thank you, sir, for taking time with us today here on the Summit. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, want to encourage people to stay up to date with us at gpacksports.com and then Twitter at gpacksports, G-P-A-C sports. And uh more to come. And, uh, you know, we're just uh, hopefully we put a little spring in people's step yesterday with our announcement that we intend to move forward. Uh, we're all looking for positivity right now. And uh, uh, August 15, we start practice, Joey, and then September 5 and September 12 are competition dates. Uh, and we thought that those dates seemed forever off in the distance. But boy, they're coming fast and closing in quickly. I'm ready. It, I'm it, ready. It cannot come quickly enough as far Absolutely. as I'm Absolutely. Ready. Thank you very much. We encourage everyone, please do like and share this video, and please do subscribe to the channel, Midwest Sports Net. Thank you again for watching. I'm Joey McWilliams. God bless you, and have a great day.